So in this experiment, you're going to be using a simulation again, and you're going to take data off of that and then do some calculations. So the first thing you do is go to the web address given in your lab manual. And when you first log on, it's going to give you this pop-up window that just says that in their opinion, you should be using this simulation on a computer or an iPad, but not on a phone. So just click OK, and this is your simulation. Now, as the manual outlines for you, what we've got is we've got two spectra on this graph over here. So one of them is in blue and one of them is in green. So the blue one is actual data from a galaxy. This is the spectrum from the galaxy. The green spectrum is the spectrum we would expect to get if that galaxy was not moving away from us. There will be some differences because the green spectrum is a simulation and the blue spectrum is real data. But the green spectrum is what we would expect to get if that galaxy was not moving away from us. So by measuring how much the blue spectrum has been redshifted over from the green spectrum, we can figure out how fast that galaxy is moving away from us. Now there's a couple of different tools for figuring this out. So up here at the top, we've got a slider bar, which allows you to move the green spectrum back and forth by a lot. There's also these green arrows, and they will move by larger steps, and then there's smaller green arrows which will move things by very small steps. There's also this zoom button up here at the top. So you click on zoom, and it gives you a little magnifying glass that you can move around, and you can turn it off as well. So your job is to move the green spectrum until it looks like it's lined up on top of the blue spectrum as accurately as possible. Now when they're best matched up, that means that the correlation between them is high, and this thermometer deal over here tells you how much correlation you've got. So we want this correlation to get higher. So for example, if I move the green spectrum over, you see that that thermometer is going up and up because I'm getting closer and closer to a good match. So again, I'll use the slider bar to go big steps over, and then I can use these green arrows to go a little more. And at this point, I want to be watching my correlation and making sure that it's still going up. Another place you can watch it is up here at the top or over here in this data table. But you want the correlation to be as high as possible. So I'll click the green buttons now, and that's made it go up, up, up. Oh, that went down. So I go back one, and now I want to use the smaller arrows to try and get my correlation higher again. So I'll click up. Oh, that made it worse again. So click the other way, and I can go quite a distance over without it going down again. So I'm going to turn on my zoom button and have a look and see, OK, I want these peaks, the green and the blue peaks, to be right on top of each other. And they look like they're pretty good. So I can tweak this a little bit as I want to, but right now it's looking pretty good. So I click zoom off, and now you can see that all these little peaks in here are basically lined up between the green and the blue spectrum. And that's what we want. So we want to get the correlation in this thermometer or in this value up here at the top as high as possible. And it won't be an exact match between the spectrums, but you should see that they look pretty similar. So even these peaks over here look pretty lined up vertical with one another. Now, once you've got this as correlated as possible, you'll notice that all the data you need has been filled into this data table up here. And you're going to want to match the correlation for 10 different galaxies. So up here at the top, there's a little drop down menu. You can go from Galaxy 1 to Galaxy 2, and now we're going to fill in this one. So again, we're going to shift the spectrum back and forth, and the data will be filled into this data table up here. So again, I make big adjustments with the slider bar, and then I can make smaller adjustments with the green arrows, and I want to try and make my correlation as high as possible. And if I want to zoom in, I click on the zoom button and just double check that the peaks all look like they're lined up with one another. And when I'm happy with that, again, all of my data is filled in here. Now this data table, you're also going to want to copy into your lab notebook. So the lab manual suggests how to set up your table, and then you would copy all of this data into that table. So after you get the correlation as high as possible for every galaxy, write down your data, and then you can switch to the next galaxy, and again, work on matching up those two spectrums. Now, after you've taken all your data, you'll have all your data recorded in your notebook. So these four columns are just the data that you got directly off the screen from the simulation. And you're going to have an extra column in your data table for calculating the velocity. So that's the velocity that that galaxy is moving away from us. So the universe is expanding. All the galaxies appear to be moving away from us. We're going to calculate the velocity that each of these individual galaxies is moving away from us. So to get the velocity, you're going to use this equation, 
and your redshift, and the lab manual explains how you use these numbers and this formula to get these numbers here. Then you're going to be making a graph of the velocity versus the distance. So this graph is actually going to be a reproduction of the very famous hubble lemaitre redshift graph, which finds that the velocity that a galaxy is moving away from us is directly proportional to the distance that it is away from us. And that's just because the entire universe is uniformly expanding. Now to get a good graph, you only need to graph about six to eight data points, and you've got 10 of them here. So this is actually a few too many. So to make your life easier, I'm just going to have you graph six of these data points, specifically this one, this one, and these four. So you're only going to make a graph of these two columns of data for these six data points. And the reason why I chose these ones is that they're the smallest values. So these are all a bit larger. These are the six smallest ones. So you'll make a graph of just this data here. The velocity is going to go on your y-axis, and the distance will go on your x-axis. So let me show you what that looks like. So here's the graph, and I've only graphed the six data points that I pointed out before. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And as you can see, I only barely fit my data on. I actually do not recommend that you go right to the edges of the page. It would probably be better for you to use a larger span of data along the axis, and that way your data will be squished in just a little bit. So going right to the edge of the page is not really recommended. So you can see just by looking at this data that, yeah, it does basically look linear, which is what we expected. That's what Hubble discovered, that the velocity that a galaxy appears to be traveling away from us is directly proportional to how far away that galaxy is from us. So we're going to fit a straight line through the data now. And as always, you don't have to hit every single point, but you do want to represent the overall trend of the data. And by the way, if you do find that you've got one data point that does not fall on the line, it's always a good idea to go back and double check that you didn't misplot it. So just go back and double check that you did draw that dot in the right place. And if not, correct it. So I've created my graph in ink, but you should always work in pencil for your graphs. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate the slope of this graph. So to calculate the slope, you want to choose two places on the line. So not data points, but points on the line itself that are far apart from one another. So you'll get the most accurate value when the two points that you choose are far apart. But you are welcome to choose points that are kind of at a convenient location. So for example, right here, I've got a point that happens to fall on the grid lines here. So that'll be convenient. And I've got another one up here. So let me draw in some more lines just so it's really obvious where those are. So now we've got two points on the line, and these would be labeled as x1, y1, and over here, x2, y2. So x1, x2, y1, y2. And then, just if you need the reminder to calculate the slope of a graph, it's going to be equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And that gives you your slope value, which in this case is going to be equal to the hubble lemaitre parameter, which is one of the things you need to find in this lab. So you'll calculate the slope, and the units on it are always going to be rise over run for a slope, so that'll be kilometers per second per megaparsec. The last thing that you're going to be calculating is the age of the universe. So you're going to take the data for one of your galaxies and you're going to calculate the age of the universe. Specifically, we're going to study galaxy number 9. So you've already got two pieces of information for galaxy 9. You know how far away from us it is, and you know how fast it's traveling away from us, the velocity. So we've already got those two pieces of information, and we can feed them into this equation here and calculate the time that galaxy 9 has been moving away from us. So we've got the distance and the velocity, and we solve for the time. However, before you start, you first want to take the distance for galaxy 9, which is currently in megaparsecs, and you want to convert that into kilometers, because that'll help our units cancel out correctly later. So the lab manual gives you the conversion factor here for converting megaparsecs into kilometers. You do that first, then you do the calculation to figure out what the time is, and when you're finished, the time that you get is going to be in seconds, and you want to convert that to years. And again, the lab manual gives you the conversion factor to go from seconds to years. 
So you do a conversion first, then you do the calculation, and then when you're finished, you do another conversion. So conversion, calculation, conversion, and that gives you the age of the universe in years. So coming down here, they explain that if you do this calculation for any galaxy, you get roughly the same answer, which is how we know that this is the age of the universe. All of the galaxies started together at the Big Bang, and ever since then they've been traveling away from each other. And you could pick any galaxy and do this calculation for how long that galaxy has been traveling away from us, and you get the same answer, the age of the universe. So at this point, you'll have your age of the universe, and you're going to compare it to the accepted value, which is 13.8 billion years.